Millions of Palestinians suffer under a brutal system of Israeli apartheid backed by the so-called democratic West. There are around 3 million Palestinians living in the illegally Israeli-occupied West Bank. There are around 2 million Palestinians living in an open-air prison camp called Gaza. And about 2 million more Palestinians are technically citizens of apartheid Israel on paper, but they're really third-class citizens and they're treated like non-citizens. Today, I'm going to be talking about the latest developments in apartheid Israel that are like out of like a dystopian movie. I mean, they're truly crazy. The latest development is that the Israeli apartheid regime now requires Palestinians to register with the government if they fall in love with a foreigner. Quite literally, the Israeli apartheid regime is tracking Palestinian romantic relationships trying to prevent them from being in relationships. It is truly sadistic and cruel. If you don't believe me, if you think this is all, you know, leftist anti-imperialist propaganda, here is the propaganda outlet of the British government, BBC. Of course, Britain strongly supports apartheid Israel and has for many decades, despite its genocidal crimes against the Palestinian people. But even the BBC has to acknowledge the cruel racist brutality of Israeli apartheid. This is an article that was just published this September titled Israeli rules say West Bank visitors must declare love interest. Keep in mind, again, this is the BBC. This is by all you know definitions for decades, the BBC has been a pro-Israel mouthpiece, an anti-Palestinian mouthpiece. And it has to acknowledge the brutal racist reality of apartheid Israel. Again, I'm reading from the BBC here. Foreigners must tell the Israeli defense ministry if they fall in love with a Palestinian in the occupied West Bank, according to new rules. If a foreigner marries a Palestinian, they will be required to leave Palestine after 27 months for a cooling off period of at least half a year. This is part of a tightening of rules on foreigners living in or wanting to visit the West Bank. Palestinians and even Israeli NGOs have accused the Israeli regime of taking restrictions to a new level. The regulations are laid out in a lengthy document and they include a demand on foreigners to inform the Israeli authorities within 30 days of starting a relationship with a Palestinian ID holder. So quite literally, the Israeli apartheid regime is saying, if you're a foreigner and you go to the Israeli occupied West Bank, this is Palestinian territory according to international law, it has been illegally occupied by the Israeli colonialist regime since 1967 in blatant violation of international law. There are around 3 million Palestinians living there under illegal, brutal, violent Israeli military occupation. And now the Israeli apartheid regime is saying, if you are a foreigner who go to occupied Palestine in the West Bank, if you fall in love with a Palestinian, you have to register your relationship with the Israeli occupation forces, with the Israeli apartheid regime. And if you marry a Palestinian, after two years, you have to leave Palestine, leave the occupied West Bank, and spend at least half a year abroad because the Palestinian, the, the Israeli apartheid regime wants Palestinians to suffer. The cruelty is the point. That's what people often say. The cruelty is the point. The Israeli apartheid regime is intentionally trying to sabotage Palestinian romantic relationships. The Israeli apartheid regime does not want Palestinians to be in romantic relationships with foreigners in particular. It wants to sabotage their relationships because that cr the cruelty is the point. The Israeli apartheid regime's goal is to make life so miserable, to make Palestinians suffer, suffer so much that they leave their ancestral land so the Israeli colonial regime can colonize all of it. That's the goal. It's massive 
ethnic cleansing and depopulation, removal of the Palestinian population from their indigenous ancestral land. So I'm going to continue here. Again, I'm reading from BBC. This is not a pro-Palestinian media outlet. This is the voice of the British state, a British state propaganda outlet. So this article quotes the executive director of an Israeli non-governmental organization called Hamoked, and her name is Jessica Montel. This is an Israeli speaking. She admits that, quote, this is about demographic engineering of Palestinian society and isolating Palestinian society from the outside world. She says, they make it much more difficult for people to come and work in Palestinian institutions, volunteer, invest, teach, and study. They also make it more difficult to be a Palestinian. The Israeli apartheid regime's goal is to make it so impossible to have a basic life, to have a relationship, to have a life, to have a family, that they want the Palestinians to just leave. The PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, which is the de facto leadership in the West Bank, they said that this brings in, quote, apartheid regulations that impose a reality of one state and two different systems. So I'm going to read here now. Again, this is from the BBC. I just need to stress that again. This is from an anti-Palestinian British regime propaganda outlet funded by the UK government, which supports apartheid Israel strongly and is, is against Palestinians. But it has to acknowledge the blatant reality that is staring everyone in the face because no one can deny the fact that Israel is an apartheid regime. Even Western biased so-called human rights organizations like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, which are extremely biased in the interest of Western governments, of Western imperialism, they have a revolving door with Western governments. But even they, after decades of printing pro-Israel propaganda, have recently had to admit that Israel is an apartheid regime, publishing reports saying that Palestinians are subjected to apartheid, which is a crime against humanity under international law. But the U.S. government still sends apartheid Israel $3.8 billion per year in unilateral military aid, funding the Israeli apartheid regime and its colonial illegal occupation of Palestine. So I'm going to go back to this BBC article and continue reading. It describes the brutality, the cruelty of the Israeli occupation in Palestine. A long-standing Israeli ban on granting residency status to foreign spouses of Palestinians in the West Bank means that thousands of people continue to live with an uncertain legal status. The campaign group Right to Enter complains of, quote, discriminatory, cruel, and arbitrarily pr arbitrary practices by Israeli authorities, end quote, causing, quote, immense humanitarian difficulties, end quote, for foreign spouses which results in them being forcibly separated from their families in the West Bank. That's the goal. Again, the goal is cruelty. The goal is to prevent Palestinians from being able to have families and relationships, to sabotage their communities, and eventually to force them to leave Palestine. That's the, that's the Israeli apartheid regime's goal. It says the new procedures, this is again a, a, an NGO, one of the, a beloved NGO that the West... Western governments, the neoliberal governments love talking about NGOs. Well, here's an NGO, right to enter, saying that the new Israeli procedures formalize and aggravate many of the existing restrictions and will force many families to move or stay abroad to maintain their family unity. That's exactly the goal, to force Palestinians off their indigenous ancestral land so the Israeli regime can colonize it. Some categories of visits to relatives that are not even at listed in the new rules, basically making them, basically saying they're not allowed, is visits to siblings, grandparents, and grandchildren. The Israeli apartheid regime's goal is to separate these Palestinian families, to break them up, and to break up their communities. That's the goal. And this is one of many examples of the apartheid brutal conditions that Palestinians are subjected to. Here is an article recently published in a, an Israeli newspaper. This is an Israeli liberal Zionist newspaper that supports the settler colonialist project, but it just wants a more liberal face to it, called Haaretz. This article is titled, 
dozens of Palestinian workers ordered off Israeli bus to make room for Jewish passengers. The article notes, this is from August 9th, three Jewish Israeli passengers who boarded a bus on its way to the West Bank forced the removal of dozens of Palestinians. About 50 Palestinian workers were made to get off the bus in the city of B'nai Brak area in order to accommodate three Jewish passengers who refused to ride with them and demanded the driver to force them off. So 50 Palestinian workers were forced off a bus on behalf of three Israelis. This is apartheid. What, this is, what do you call this? Forcing off 50 Palestinians for three Israelis. Here's a quote from a, a Palestinian passenger. Quote, After a few buses went by and didn't stop, because bus 288 is reserved for Jews only, one that was empty of Jews stopped for us and we got on. This is the Palestinian passenger recalling. Then three Jews boarded in B'nai Barak and demanded that all the Arabs be taken off. The driver told us to get off and figure it out, who then drove off with the settlers. This is apartheid. There's no other term for it. Colonialism, racism, apartheid. There's so many stories like this. Anyone who denies that Israel's an apartheid regime, they, they live on another planet. They're not on planet Earth. Here's another story from friend of the show, Asa Winstanley. I've had him on Multipolarista. From his great substack, Palestine is still the issue. Israel, Israel's kangaroo court jails Palestinian charity worker for 12 years. Asa wrote, The Israeli apartheid regime sentenced Palestinian aid worker Mohammed al Halavi to 12 years in prison based on sham convictions in a kangaroo court which relied on entirely fictional charges. The former director of the Gaza Operation of International Christian Charity, World Vision, El Halavi, is a victim of a fit-up by Israel. Point out that, that not all Palestinians are Muslim, by the way. There's also Palestinians who are Christians, and there are Christian charities which are also being affected and repressed by the Israeli apartheid regime. This is not about religion. There are also many Jews who are against Zionism, the Zionist settler colonial project. This is not about religion. This is about colonialism. Israel is a colonialist project created by Western colonialists, European and US, European and North American colonialists. The Zionist regime is determined to eradicate not only all forms of Palestinian resistance, both peaceful and armed, but all forms of Palestinian life. In an extraordinary step, Israel's kangaroo court in June convicted al Halavi, yet kept its ruling a secret from the public, decreeing that the 254-page document would be designated classified. As al Halavi's lawyer told reporters at the time, the only reason Israel has kept it a secret is to hide the state's embarrassment at the sheer shoddiness of its so-called case against Al Halavi. So, this is the reality of the Israeli apartheid regime. Here's another re face of the reality of the Israeli apartheid regime. This is from Friends of the Show, the Ele Electronic Intifada. Now, this is an actual pal pal pro Palestinian website supporting Palestinian rights, unlike BBC, which is a voice of the British regime that supports apartheid Israel. Here's an article in the Electronic Intifada from May. Video Tel Aviv mob chants death to the Arabs. A video posted online showed a mob chanting death to the Arabs and waving Israeli flags around Tel Aviv University. Zionist extremists went around Tel Aviv University, including dorms where some Arab Palestinian citizens were, shouting death to the Arabs, among other hateful incitement. Neither the Israeli police nor the university did anything to protect the threatened students. So... This is the reality of brutal racist colonialism and apartheid supported by the so-called democratic West.
The United States gives apartheid Israel $3.8 billion every single year in unilateral military aid to help fund the genocidal ethnic cleansing and constant wars against Palestinians. The 3 million Palestinians under illegal Israeli military occupation in the West Bank, the 2 million Palestinians who live in an open air prison in Gaza, even the former conservative prime minister of Britain, David Cameron, a right winger, even he admitted that Gazans, 2 million Gazans, Palestinians live in an open air prison, a massive internment camp. And then there are the 2 million Palestinians in 48 in the Israeli colonial regime who also live with third class status. And the so-called Democratic West supports this and funds this illegal, criminal occupation and these colonial policies in which Palestinians cannot even have a romantic relationship without having the Israeli colonial regime being able to decide whether or not they're allowed to have a relationship, whether or not they're allowed to have a family. This is colonialism. There's no other word for it.